Here's an example where we have two objects coming in from different directions. They collide with each other, they will stick together, and then together they will move off in some direction. Our object here is to find the final velocity of the two objects sticking together and the angle with respect to the horizontal in which it will be moving. Now, this is a good example of two cars colliding at an intersection, sticking together, and then moving off into a certain direction. And from the results, we should be able to calculate what their initial speed should have been. Now, here we turn the equation around. Of course, we're first, we're told how fast they were moving, what their mass were, and we're supposed to figure out what their final velocity will be and the final direction of their motion when they stick together. All right, in order to do that, since there's two unknowns, we're going to need two equations. We can do that by using the conservation of momentum both in the x direction and in the y direction separately. For example, we can say that p initial in the x direction must equal p final in the x direction. So the momentum in the x direction will be conserved and we can say the same thing for the y direction. p initial in the y direction must equal p final in the y direction. So momentum in the y direction will be conserved as well. So our general equation will be as follows m1 v1 initial in the x direction plus m2 v2 initial in the x direction equals m1 plus m2 times v final in the x direction. We could do the same for the y direction. We could say that m1 v1 initial in the y direction plus m2 v2 initial initial in the y direction must equal m1 plus m2 times v final in the y direction. So there again, the momentum in the y direction is conserved. This will allow us to find v final in the x direction and v final in the y direction, which, could we, which we can then use to find the total v final. But before we can continue with, this, with these uh, equations, we have to find the x and y components of the final velocity. So here we can see that if this is the final velocity, uh, after the collision, that means we're going to have a v final in the x direction, v final in the x direction, which is equal to v final times the cosine of the angle theta. And here we can see that we're going to have a v final in the y direction, which is equal to v final times the sine of the angle theta. At least that way we have some perspective of what we're dealing with here. Let's now plug in the numbers that we have. Well, first of all, we know that m2 will not have any initial velocity in the x direction, so this will go to zero. Likewise, we can see here that m1, mass 1, will not have any initial velocity in the y direction, so this will go to zero as well. That makes things a little bit easier. All right, so now we have m1, which is 1,500 kilograms, and notice I will just simply leave off the units to make it a little bit cleaner of an equation to work with. v1 initial in the x direction is 15. That equals the sum of the two masses, which is 1,500 plus 1,200 added together, times v final in the x direction. Okay, we can do the same with the right side equation here. Here, notice that m2, uh, that would be uh, 1,200, times v2 initial in the y direction, which is 18 meters per second, equals the sum of the two masses, which is 1,500 plus 1,200 times v final in the y direction. All right, so far so good. Let's simplify things a little bit. So this would be uh, 15 times 15 is uh, 225 with two zeros equals 2700 um, times v final in the x direction, which means v final in the x direction is equal to 22,500 divided by 2700. The zeros cancel out. And for that, I'm going to need a calculator, which this time I brought with me. So we have 225 divided by 27, that gives us 8.33. So V final in the X direction is equal to 8.33 meters per second. All right, now we go find the final velocity in the Y direction. So here we have 1200 times 18. So that gives us 21,600 is equal to 2700 times v final in the y direction. So v final in the y direction is equal to 21,600 divided by 2,700. The zeros cancel out. So 216 divided by 27 is exactly eight. So v final in the y direction is equal to 8.00 meters per second. All right, so now we have the x and the y velocities 
or components of the final velocity. Now, how do we find the final velocity? Well, we can use Pythagorean theorem. We can say that v final is equal to the square root of v final in the x direction squared plus v final in the y direction squared. So this is equal to the square root of 8.33 squared plus 8.00 squared or 8.3333 squared at uh, that would be plus 64 equals take the square root of that ah that's better so we have 11.55 meters per second which would be the final velocity of the two cars slammed together moving out in some direction now we want to know what direction so we want to find what that angle is and notice we can say that the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side which is equal to the uh, velocity final in the y direction divided by velocity final in the x direction which means we can find the angle by taking the arc tangent of the opposite over the adjacent over v final y in the y direction divided by v final in the x direction or the arc tangent of v final in the y direction was 8 and in the x direction 8.33 all right so what was that angle equal to so 8 divided by 8.33 and take the arc tangent of that and we get 43.8 degrees 43.8 degrees all right and that allows us to find the final velocity and the direction or the angle with respect to the horizontal Again, the way you do that here is you use the two equations, conservation in the x of momentum in the x direction, conservation of momentum in the y direction. Fairly simple here in that in the first case, this does not have a y component, this does not have an x component, that's why these two um, go to zero. We do find v final in the x direction, v final in the y direction, and then you use those two combined to find the ultimate v final using Pythagorean theorem, and then use the arc tangent, we find the direction the angle with respect to horizontal. And that's how we do that.